This is the video for the standard level portion of C 3.2 on defense against diseases. Disease is a bit of a broad term. It could be um, from environmental causes, genetic causes, or infectious causes. And in this video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on infectious diseases. And those are diseases that can be passed from one organism to the other. So that's the key term here, is this passing from one organism to the next. Infectious diseases are caused by things called pathogens, and pathogens can be organisms or viruses, and that includes things like bacteria, fungi, protists, and of course viruses. We'll be learning about a lot of sophisticated mechanisms for dealing with pathogens, but our body's first line of defense, its primary defense mechanism, involves two things that we don't often think about in terms of immunity, which is our skin and our mucous membranes. So our skin is actually made out of um, a very tough barrier, and this outer layer of skin is actually dead. So the skin that I'm touching right now is made up of dead cells and because those are dead cells it forms a really kind of like impenetrable barrier for pathogens to make their way into our bloodstream so that's how pathogens um, become very bad and dangerous when they get into our bloodstream skin prevents that we obviously have all kinds of holes in our skin, right? Holes that we need, but holes nonetheless. And that's an opportunity for pathogens to get into our bodies. So around those openings to the skin, we have what's called a mucous membrane. So anywhere there's an opening in our skin, so eyes, ears, mouth, nose, vagina, you, um, anus, urethra, all of those are covered by mucous membranes. And that is a membrane that produces this really sticky mucus that traps the pathogens. So almost like a fly trap so that those pathogens don't make its way into our bloodstream. Now let's say I poke a hole in my skin. I get a cut in my skin. That can be really bad for two reasons. One, I don't want to bleed to death, but two, I don't want to create an opportunity for pathogens to make their way into my bloodstream. I need to form a clot really quickly to plug up that hole. And so this whole sequence of events called a clotting cascade is going to happen after we get a cut in our skin. And and here's how that works. First, we're gonna have these little things called platelets attached to that cut. Platelets are tiny cell fragments, okay? And once they attach to that site where the cut or the hole in the skin is, they are going to release chemicals called clotting factors. There are lots of different clotting factors. It's a whole family of chemicals. But in general, these clotting factors are going to cause prothrombin, to be converted into thrombin. So prothrombin is a chemical um, that's in our blood and it's kind of in an inactive form. The clotting factors convert it to its active form called thrombin and then thrombin starts to act like an enzyme. This thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin. Ooh, there's a lot of conversions here. So fibrinogen is a soluble blood protein. So it's floating around, it's, it's dissolved in our blood plasma, it's produced in our liver. And when it comes in contact with thrombin, thrombin converts it to fibrin. And fibrin is insoluble, so it comes out of solution and it forms this mesh that we see here. This mesh is going to trap um, blood cells and platelets, things that are floating by in the bloodstream, and this trapped blood cell platelet fibrin mesh is the clot, okay? And so this is what forms a blood clot to seal those holes in the skin. So when we think about overall, holistically, how our body defends itself against pathogens, we've got a couple of different options. We just talked about that primary defense system, which is our skin and mucous membranes. That's going to be different than our immune system, okay? So immunity is not the same thing as that primary defense. And even within that branch of immunity, we have two types of immunity. So there is an innate immune system and an adaptive immune system. 
Innate immune systems involve these cells called phagocytes. Cyte means cell. Phago refers to phagocytosis, this engulfing process, okay? And this remains constant throughout an organism's life. It is not specific. So these are not uh, cells that attack specific pathogens. They attack anything that doesn't belong there. The adaptive immune system involves cells called lymphocytes. Again, site means cell lympho. These are going to be cells living in your lymph nodes. And these are going to be the cells that build that immunity, build that memory throughout an organism's life. So this becomes more and more intricate as an organism gets older. They are specific to different pathogens, so I'm going to have different immune uh, mechanisms for different pathogens. Let's do a quick review of the types of blood cells. So we'll be talking about two types of blood cells, although there are many. So the first of which being erythrocytes. Erythrocytes are also our red blood cells. They're for carrying oxygen primarily, so we won't be discussing them further in terms of immune system. Then we have white blood cells, also known as leukocytes. Again, there are lots of types of leukocytes. We'll focus on two broad categories of leukocytes, one of which being phagocytes. So phagocytes are going to be um, like these macrophages or phagocytic leukocytes. They're going to gobble up, they're going to engulf um, pathogens. Then we have lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are going to be um, part of adaptive immunity, okay? So these are gonna be producing specific or geared towards the production of specific antibodies. Phagocytes are non-specific. Within these lymphocytes, we'll talk about two different types of cells, okay? So we're going to have T cells. T cells are responsible for identifying the correct B cells that can produce an antibody that is specific to the antigen on a pathogen. B cells, when the correct one is found, these are going to clone themselves many times via mitosis. It's something called clonal selection. Some of these B cells are going to differentiate into plasma cells. Plasma cells are going to produce the antibodies. Other B cells will differentiate into memory cells, and these are the basis of immunity. So they'll remain in our bloodstream to produce uh, antibodies for an infection later on. Let's chat about these phagocytes. Again, these are part of our innate immunity. They are non-specific, and we're gonna hear them referred to by a few different terms, possibly phagocyte, macrophage, and phagocytic leukocyte. Those terms are all synonymous. They're all referring to the same type of cell, and they are, again, non-specific. That's important. And what we mean when they say non-specific, they're not just running around like, gobbling up anything they can, what they're doing is they're reading those antigens, those recognition proteins on the outside of a cell, and they are determining whether or not that thing uh, belongs there. Is it self or not self? If this macrophage, if this phagocyte does not recognize what it's reading, if it categorizes it as non-self, then it is going to engulf that pathogen. It's going to identify it as a pathogen, engulf it via endocytosis. Now, once that pathogen is on the inside of the cell, we can see that happening here, okay, that this pathogen is going to be engulfed and now it's sitting inside of a vesicle inside of this phagocyte. Once that happens, inside, enzymes inside lysosomes, I'll try to draw one here, a lysosome full of enzyme will merge with that vesicle full of pathogens and it will destroy the pathogen. Okay, so this phagocyte, this innate immune cell is there to destroy pathogens and it does that by engulfing them and then using the enzymes inside of its lysosomes. Now, when it comes to adaptive immunity, what we wanna associate adaptive immunity with is antibodies. A for adaptive, A for antibodies. And those are gonna come from all of those lymphocytes that we talked about. Now, we talked about lots of different types of cells. 
T cells, B cells, plasma cells, memory cells. There's a whole system of cells that have to cooperate in order to produce those antibodies. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning. Lymphocytes are cells that are found in the lymph nodes, it's how we get that word, and they circulate throughout the bloodstream. They produce antibodies. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins, so they kind of look like this, a Y-shaped protein, and on the end of the protein, there's a special shape, I should have done a better job here of drawing this, on the end of this Y-shaped protein, um, there's a special shape, a special binding site, that will match with the antigen on the outside of a pathogen. So again, that antigen is a recognition protein on the outside of a cell or a virus, and these antibodies have specially shaped um, bits <laughs> to match up with the, those antigens um, on this pathogen. So the way that these antibodies work is once they bind to the pathogen, they either tag that pathogen for destruction by other immune cells that we will not talk about, or what this can do is it can prevent this pathogen from using its antigen to bind and to and infect other cells. So the way the antibodies work is a little bit um, complicated and not really the focus of this part. This is really more focused on where do these antibodies come from and why do we need so many different types. So again, antibodies are specific. So I'm going to need a different antibody for every antigen. And so that means I need to be able to make different types of lymphocytes. Each lymphocyte is only going to be able to make a very limited uh, number or types of antibodies. So if I need lots of antibodies because there are lots of antigens, that also means I need lots of different lymphocytes. So within my lymph nodes, I'm going to have thousands of different versions of these lymphocytes all ready and waiting to make these different antibodies um, for the different antigens on the pathogens. Now, antigens aren't just on pathogens, they're recognition proteins, those glycoproteins that we're gonna find on the surface of all cells and viruses. So for example, I have type B blood. If you've already studied blood groups, this is so interesting here, the connection. My type B blood um, has type B antigens along the outside, okay? So my immune system recognizes those, it thinks that those are great, thinks that they belong to me. It also means that my immune system is going to produce antibodies called anti-A antibodies. These are going to be antibodies that are going to have um, a fit to the type A antigens, okay? So what will happen if type A blood cells are injected into my bloodstream, okay, is that my immune system will produce these anti-A antigens. It will bind to these cells because it does not recognize these as self, and I will have an immune response. So this is why we need to make sure that if we're getting a blood transfusion, it's only the blood cells um, that match our blood group that we're doing that. And that's again because antigens that our body does not recognize as self will stimulate an immune response. Next, we're going to talk about a series of steps in our adaptive immune system, and that means that everything should be leading up to the production of antibodies. So the first thing that we're going to see is the appearance of this macrophage or phagocyte, okay? So this is the first cell that comes into play in our little film about antibodies here. And that pathogen is going to get engulfed by those phagocytes. So it's going to engulf the pathogen and then destroy it using the enzymes in its lysosomes and then it does something really weird. It takes that destroyed pathogen and it wears it on its outside like a hat or a costume. And that's called antigen presentation. It's almost like it's saying, hey guys, look what I found. I'm wearing this dead pathogen. What should we do? So once that antigen presentation has taken place, the next cell to be activated is what we call the T cell or helper T cell or T lymphocyte. Okay, again, a T cell that is a lymphocyte. That's what we're looking at. Now that antigen presentation on the outside of the phagocyte will activate that T cell. 
and the T cell's job is to find the specific B cell that can make that antibody. So remember, B cells are also an example of a lymphocyte. So you might hear them referred to as B cell or B lymphocyte or just lymphocyte. I know this is confusing, but hang in there. Okay, so the activated T cell is going to locate the correct B cell that is capable of making the antibody that we need in order to fight that pathogen. Once that B cell has been identified, the T cell's job is done. And now we're going to hand it over to that specific B cell. That B cell is going to clone itself many times. This is something called clonal selection. Now that we have found and activated the right B cell, we need a lot of them. So lots of mitosis there. Then it's going to start to differentiate, okay? So that differentiation process is going to turn some of these B cells into plasma cells. So when we say differentiate, that means that they're going to express different genes, and one of the genes that they're going to be expressing is the ability to produce antibodies. So they're gonna grow, and they're gonna produce organelles for antibody production, Remember, antibodies are proteins, so that means they're going to be building a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum and a lot of Golgi's, and this is where the antibodies are coming from. So all of this was in order to secrete lots and lots of antibodies. This idea of memory cells is a higher level topic, so we'll leave that for now. But again, the whole goal here, if we're thinking about antibody production, really required a lot of interaction and interdependence between different types of cells within our immune system.